Hello everybody, it's Larry, and in this video we're going to talk about the new records that Ancestry has uploaded in the last couple months. Uh, 24 million records have been uploaded, and I'm going to show you how to see those. If you haven't done a search recently, you're missing out on some of the new data. So if you go to search and go down to card catalog, you will see the ones that are new, or in the last two months, last 60 days, uh, they're flagged by new. And right here, you know, this is from England, 4.9 million uh, birth, death, and marriage certificates from Staffordshire, Australia, you know, 8,000. Uh, two and a half million U.S. Navy muster rolls. So if you have ancestors in the Navy, there's now two and a half million more records for you to view. Now, uh, there's some from Germany and uh, some more from England and these from Norway. You see it says 3, 14, 2019. Uh, those just, when I first started doing this video, those were actually considered new. <laughs> so there's, you know, six and a half million records that are now 60 days old. Uh, just barely over 60 days old, so they're no longer considered new, no longer flag new. So if you go to the card catalog, you will always see what's new and recent. And maybe, you know, if you've been keeping up with your research, you can look here and say, okay, what has happened in the last few months? Now, if you have a sort by date added, perhaps it's been three months since you've looked, you can actually go back and say, okay, this was on February 14th, three months ago. Uh, UK World War II alien internees or you know some records from France from that period of time so what's the the value of this well let's put this into a real world example now uh, my father biological father he wasn't in the Navy he was in the Marines so we're going to look through the the Marine information or we're just gonna search the military information and let it see what it gives us so the way you can do that, and it, all it's going to do is going to search these catalogs, but rather than click on military and sort and do all that, I'm going to show you a shortcut. The shortcut is click on search and go down to military. And so once we're here at military, we're going to put in my father's name, Larkin Brown. Okay. And I'm going to initially put in his birth year. And then I'm going to tell you why you should never do that. <laughs> so here's Larkin Brown. Here's the birth year. Now, whenever you put in a birth year, you're really only going to get either a, a discharge or a join to the military because all of the the daily roles, um, you know, oh, what are the, the muster roles, they're not going to hold that. So I'm going to take that year back off. I am going to do it by his name. And I'm, now I'm going to do a search. So I've got quite a few here, and they're Larkin D, which is going to be my father, Marine Corps muster rolls. Now, he wasn't a casualty, so I'm going to go draft, enlistment, and service, because that's what I want. And then U.S. Marine Corps muster rolls, because I know he's in the Marine Corps. If you don't know, you could look at the others, but they weren't there. Now, look at this. This is an absolute treasure trove of information about my biological father. Now, you have to remember, my father died in 1999. I never knew him, never met him. And the only thing that I knew about him was what I was told by the family. And they told me that when he was 13, he joined the Army. And at 14, they found out, and they nullified his uh, joining and sent him on his way, told him don't come back. At 15, he joined the Navy. At 16, they found out, and he was asked to go away again. Again, not an honorable, dishonorable discharge. He was nullified because of his age. When he was 17, he got his mother to sign with him, and he joined the Marines. And so at age 17, he joined the Marines, and there he served in the Korean War. Now, we can tell right here, here's the muster dates. It goes, you know, 55, 54, there's a 56, uh, there's some 53s. And so what I was able to do is I was able to copy all of these into a spreadsheet. And then I was able to go to each one of these records and, you know, look at the record, see what was on it. And then I saved those. And when I saved them, I saved them and entitled them by the year and the month and then the day so then when I looked I could go through a picture viewer and as I scrolled through it told me where he was where he was next and gave me a full three year month by month of where he was so we go in here there's Larkin D Brown E2 now some of the documents right here you know you have to look around it was January 31st 1955 in San Francisco okay and uh, contract duty uh, special designation and then date of rank. So, date of rank, and you know you have this information here. So, for Larkin Daniel Brown, there's nothing over in this area. Okay, so I went through you know each one of those and copied them into the file. Now, 
This is the photo that the family gave me. So, you know, obviously military. And here is a list of all of the muster rolls that I was able to, you know, get for him. There was uh, 37 of them to be exact. So, you know, 37 uh, pretty much monthly. Now, there was a couple that there were two in the same month, like here's April of of 1956 you know there's a couple of them in the same month but I was able to tell that he joined up and the uh, Korean War was still going on he went through his basic training was assigned for the first Marines first battalion for those that don't know that was Incheon, Pusan, and the Frozen Chosen he went over and right as he was to go over they signed an armistice so when he joined the first battalion uh, first division as one of the replacement units because there were so many losses in those three battles that he became one of the first, if not the first, to actually man the DMZ in, in between the North and South Korea borders. So here we have all of this information that was available to us simply by going through and searching for the military. Now, if I would have just done a search for Larkin D. Brown, which I'd done hundreds of times in researching the census reports and family trees, but never really looking at the military. And so by doing that and clicking search and look at the military, I got his entire military career. I was able to find all the information up, all the muster rolls. This was a huge treasure trove of information. And the way you know to look for that is if you've already done this type of search, click on the search, look on the card catalog, and find out if there's something new. So in this case, the U.S. Navy muster rolls have added 2.4 million new records. Okay, so if you have somebody that was in the U.S. Navy and you wanted to search the muster rolls, uh, simply come here to the card catalog, click on the Navy muster rolls, and you know pick the year range that you want to do uh, that they were in, and uh, you can actually search the rolls, and you can look through the rolls uh, or do a master search. So the great treasure trove of information that's right here, and not just for the United States. Uh, there's a lot from all the different areas in the world, you know, Germany, uh, England, Australia, uh, Norway. Now, here's another thing. On the card catalog, you can filter by location. So, you know, I know people from around the world, they look, okay, Ancestry.com, and I don't have access to the same information. But now in the card catalog, you can look like, here's Europe, you know, here's Canada, Australia, uh, Oceania, you know, the Australias and and. Uh, different parts of Asia, Africa. So let's say I want to go to Europe and I want to look up just the stuff in France. And uh, let's say Aquitaine. And I know I sounded that wrong. I, <laughs> for coming back from France, I just know that everything I said in <laughs> French is wrong, so I won't even pretend. But, you know, here's uh, Paris and vicinity uh, electoral rolls, 1900, 1932. So, you know, the voter registration, uh, gravestone, photographic index. Uh, almost a million records there, uh, you know, just prison camps and stuff, you know, 1917 through 65, World War One and II, uh, the France Jewish death deportation. I mean, there's just a treasure trove of information, and this was specific to this area of France. If I take that away, now I'm getting all of France. You know, some of these have, there's a half a million right here on the electoral rolls here, eight million in the find a grave. Now remember, you know, we're, we're talking about France. The, this is the area of France and burial at sea for France in that area. So you can get specific to areas. And the one thing I will say is, and of course, if you're in that area, you probably speak the language. But for those of you who are in the United States and you're going to search overseas in, you know, Spain or France or someplace that doesn't speak English primarily, then these records will be in French or Spanish or Portuguese or one of Germany, German, uh, German, you know, they're going to be in one of these other languages. So you are going to have to have a translate. Now you can use the Google translator on a phone. So if you have a, you know, a fairly modern iPhone or Android phone, uh, the translate, the Google translate app on that is wonderful. So I know that when I went to France, I could hold the phone up and do through the camera view and look at the menus and it would translate the French to English to me so that I could tell what I was ordering. Extremely handy. And when you're looking at these documents, you can hold your phone up in front of your computer screen and it will translate that, you know, as long as it's not in cursive, <laughs> it will translate that as best as it can into English for you to be able to read it and find out your information. So there you have it, some of the, the new stuff. There's, like I said, 24 million records 
have been added in the last 60 days with more being added all the time. Uh, let's go up to the military and then we'll go back to the card catalog to the main page. Right here, just the part that is flagged as new, 24 million records. So a lot uh, of information to be had there. Again, uh, if you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. And uh, if you haven't subscribed, subscribe already. Don't forget to click the bell notification because if you don't click the bell notification, you probably won't get notified when a new one comes out. But if you do click that bell, then YouTube will let you know whenever a new video comes out on the channel. And uh, also, if you think it's useful to some other people that are doing research, pass it along to them. Every bit helps. And as always, you guys have a great week.